No Spin Live, where you get to learn about hot topics from the world's top plastic surgeons. The story today is about a needle-free device for breast reconstruction. Sometimes when we do breast reconstruction, we expand the breast with expander. Typically, you inject that with saline through a transcutaneous uh, needle stick. So this is a uh, automated filling, if you will, of an expander using a CO2 cartridge. Jason, what do, you, what do you think about this? You know what, I, I don't pr currently perform breast reconstruction in my practice, and I'm gonna let maybe Jason Cooper, who does a lot of this, get a little bit, um, you know, expound on this a little further, but sounds like a good idea to me. It sounds like it needs to be tested a little bit more, but especially for those patients who don't n live near the, the doctor doing the reconstruction, I think it's a great option for those patients. So, so far, what, what I've seen sounds good to me, so I'll give it a thumbs up provisionally. Jason Cooper, what do you think? I think it's a good idea in practice for the remotely located patient. I think just caution should be, I have personally I have not used this device. So I wanna, you know, say that as a disclaimer before my comments, but look, I think it's a good idea in principle. I think it needs to be qualified with, it's always really important for patients to see their doctor during the expansion phase. And when patients uh, are at home, sort of experimenting with expansion uh, once a day, twice a day, or three times a day, things can arise. And I think it's really important to have a connection with your plastic surgeon during that time period so that uh, they can monitor you and they can ensure uh, your safety and the best outcome. I guess to me, you gotta qualify a little bit. How big of a deal is it, this little tiny needle that we use to, to, to put in saline to expand her? It's never really, I don't think, remember ever patients complaining about that, but what do you think about this? Well, they've never complained about it because they've never really had a choice. But anytime you can avoid getting stuck, I think that's a good thing. None of us like needles. And I think Jason was absolutely right about this is a neat device. It's something that allows, a, allows the patient to expand themselves. But I think the, um, it's really important that they be supervised in doing so. The, the last thing that sort of makes me lean towards thinking this device is neat is that anytime we introduce a foreign object through the skin into an expander, there's a risk of a deflation, there's a risk of infection and that can start the reconstruction all over again. So having a contained device that doesn't have to be stuck with a needle may have an advantage. We'll see how it works out in the long run. DDV, what's your perspective? It's interesting, but is this like groundbreaking news? No. Um, is there this unmet clinical need for people who are not wanting needles? No. Is it, is it neater? Yes. Um, it's an interesting thing, but this is not some huge, you know, sea change in, in reconstructive breast surgery. And to me, it looks more like an infomercial for those who are included in it. All right. Well, I think those are there's some good insights and uh, time will tell. We'll certainly gain more experience with this in the future. Mm -hmm.